Fish, got him. Come out of there. Yeah, buddy. Come out of there. You got me in that stick. Come out of there. All right, there's a good large there mouth. That's a great large and mouth. And that's why you go up in the inlet, guys. Hang on, hang on, hang on. No hurry, I got him on the goat rope, bud. He'll stay. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> that's insane. Inlets, outlets, bow ramps, and dams. <laughs> oh, buddy. That is the one we're after. And I want to point out there's a four up Fusion 19 hook right there, guys. It ain't never coming off. When you got them on the 20 pound, 100% floor, and that hook right there, you got them, dude. Right in the top of the mouth. And there it is. That's the Maxent uh, Creature Hog right yep. there, the Powerbait Maxent Creature Hog. Just Texas rigged. And Texas rigged, and you can see those willows right there, guys. I pitched all the way to the bank inside those willows right there. And that's a quality largemouth that is right a there, but. Beautiful bud. largemouth bass. Boo, yeah. Now, without question, the most key catches on that show though were the big largemouth that I found and we were really targeting big ones and we couldn't find them and I kept mentioning the inlet and we finally went over to check out the inlet and on our way in the inlet what caught my attention more than the inlet itself was the only willow bushes I saw anywhere on that lake that had any water depth on them were right around the inlet and there was two willow bushes in the inlet not even as big as the front deck of my ranger boat here little willow bushes and I recognize that scenario right away. I have an isolated willow bush. There's no possible way. It's right on the edge of a channel. There's no way there's not gonna be a bass in that willow bush. So I got out the flipping stick. This, these days, this is what my flipping stick's gonna be. This, this rod is right here. It's a seven foot three. It's a heavy power, fast action. It'll throw up to an ounce and a half bait. In that particular case, I was throwing a half ounce Texas rig with a four-aught Fusion 19 hook, and I went back and forth between a Pit Boss and a Creature Hoss, so either a Powerbait Pit Boss or a Maxent Creature Hog. Those two things I threw back and forth on that Texas rig with a four-aught Fusion 19 hook. Um, the, again, we're back to the Veracity Rod for the strength and power. It's a very, very strong blank. It deals with those hook sets, those big monster hook sets, which I dearly love very, very well. It's got 20 pound, trying 100% fluorocarbon on here, same as that day, and the Revo, uh, uh, Abu Garcia Revo ALF reel on it. Uh, it's an eight to one gear ratio, of real fast reel, very lightweight, pairs nicely with this rod. This is what I'm gonna do all my pitching with. Uh, these days is this rod. I have two of them in the boat at all times. One of them set up with 20 pound flora, one of them set up with 50 pound braid. Depending on what I'm doing, one of those two, the more vegetation there is, the more chance I'm going for the braid. There was just two little willow bushes, so I chose the fluorocarbon and it paid. No holding oh, back. Oh yeah, no, you can't. Yeah, you gotta hit them. If, the worst thing you can do is halfway hooks at yeah. them. Yeah, the harder the better. Yeah, yeah, you gotta hit them, for real. That's why you got the big rod, the big line and everything. You saw the wrestling match that turned into getting that one out of there. Yeah, you pulled him through that stuff. Fish. Got him. him. There he oh, is. Oh, another uh, nice one. I knew it. I knew I just missed one a minute ago. All right, you tell me when. I'm coming up in the boat. How about Bring that? <laughs> there we go. We don't need a net for that one. It ain't got teeth. So that's two in that pile, guys. We were talking about that inlet hook in the same spot. And there's another little chunk. That's a nice and fish. I just told camera guy Tim after we went past her, I'm like, I've got two other bites in there that I know of that I missed. And there's another one of them right there, guys. So Western Slope Largemouth are representing. Yeah. I'm going to kiss that one for sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and my little Maxent Creature Hog. Hey, easy. Sorry, buddy. Paying the bills. <laughs> a key lesson from that particular, those particular willow bushes is, is A, there's going to be more than one fish in them, almost guaranteed, because that is the most prime spot on the lake for a big largemouth to sit from anything we saw anywhere else. And we did make an entire lap of the lake over the course of the day. If you find a spot like that, you need to make it pay because let's say I go through there and I jerk a fish or two out of there. But if I come back a half an hour later or 15 minutes later, there's gonna be another one in there because whatever one size smaller fish wasn't able to get in there because he was being pushed out by the larger fish, he's gonna move in there. The larger fish that you catch may return right in there, assuming you're good at catch and release and we wish you were if you're not. Um, you know, you put that, that three, four, five pounder back and he swims right back in that same bush. He's named for the size of his mouth, not his brain. He's gonna go right back where he came from and you can probably catch him again an hour later if you really want to. So it's a tiny little spot again, not even as big as the deck of the boat, but before it was over with, we caught four fish out of those two little bushes and another one that I, that I lost. So that's a lot of production in two little bushes and it goes to show you it's worth taking the time to rig for that one spot 
and make sure that you make that spot, you know, you mine it for all it's worth. If I had 100 spots like that, I wouldn't worry about it, but I had one, so I made it work.